Liverpool have an unbelievable chance to take a foothold in the Premier League title race by beating Manchester City at Anfield. To do this, they're going to need to exploit the Premier League champions. And today, we're going to dive into how they do it. Liverpool are playing at home, they're playing with more players coming back from injury and they're playing against a Manchester City side who have given up chances. They do look vulnerable at times and it's in these specific moments that I think Liverpool can really capitalise and gain an advantage and perhaps even exploit the Premier League champions. But to be able to understand how Liverpool can do this, we need to understand their opponents, Manchester City, and how they go about what they do. So first of all, we know that they don't actually normally set up in a 4-3-3, that's just how they start we know that the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and whether it's Bernardo Silva go forwards we know that Rodri comes across and John Stones comes into the center of midfield this allows for a back three of more than likely Walker Diaz and whether it's Akanji or Ake even Guardiol we know that they set up with a back three so you have three here you have two here two here and then of course you've got your front three now all of this is fine until you realize why Manchester City do this and a lot of people assume that it's because you have two central defensive midfielders two extra players in the middle of the park to be able to dictate possession and this is a key key part of it yes but another real reason for it is because Pep Guardiola is absolutely terrified of the counter-attack he hates it. He can't stand it. The idea of a team just going straight through him while bodies have been committed, he hates it. He can't deal with it. So instead, he brings an extra defender in and holds the width of the pitch or holds the width of the penalty area. And this makes sure that teams, number one, don't have enough players to be able to go through them as easily. But it also makes sure that they have dominating or a dominating load of the possession. Now, I do believe that Liverpool are going to have a smaller amount of possession than Man City. I don't think a lot of people are really going to argue with that. However, in the way they utilize the ball, I think it will be far more direct and I think it would benefit them to really exploit these weaknesses that we're going to be looking at. The first of all being this hit double pivot right here. If you exploit this, you have a perfect chance to be able to exploit Manchester City as a whole. Because if you break this up, then all of a sudden Man City's resolute defense and their ability to recycle possession becomes unlocked and it means that Liverpool then gain space in other areas. We know that they have the likes of Haaland, De Bruyne, the likes of Bernardo Silva, Foden, I could go on, but it's this main attacking five that is going to be doing a lot of the attacking. You need to be breaking up this midfield two of more than likely John Stones and Rodri and in doing this if you break it up or if you try to exploit the space that is around them you then gain the upper hand and you cause these defenders right here a big big problem because you have a better chance for overloads out on the wings you have a better chance of really penetrating through the center of the pitch because you've really turned over the possession in a better area and also you're making these two run towards their goal this is a scenario that Pep Guardiola is absolutely petrified of which is why his teams are so good at keeping the ball because he can't stand the idea of a counter-attack he hates it which is why he's got two main double pivots. Now, if Liverpool are going to exploit this, they need to do it in two ways. The first one being through their wingers. Mo Salah and Luis Diaz have done a sensational job of making sure they penetrate through the space. But I also want to focus on Darwin Nunes, who is in unbelievable form and I think it's him that is going to be able to be the difference maker in this particular scenario. Previously, in one of my other videos, I mentioned that Manchester United, when playing Manchester City, should play a box formation. And this meant that the striker dropping back a little bit deeper to create a four-man midfield. This matches up against Man City's four-man midfield, and it means that they are able to then spring. It keeps the space condensed, and it also allows them to then spring off. I think a similar thing could really work for Liverpool. If Darwin Nunes, who I think should start, can drop into this pocket, it could be Cody Kakpo, it could be a number of players. But if they create that four-man midfield, all of a sudden you're almost nullifying or half-nullifying the amount 
of possession that Manchester City have and then it gives Liverpool the chance to go on that counter. Once that counter is established you're then looking at two things. You're looking at the two wingers to be able to try and make penetrating runs in beyond and then you're also asking your striker to be able to make a nuisance of his duel up against the main centre back. I'm looking at Darwin Nunes up against Ruben Diaz and this for me is one of the main key duels right here. In fact what Liverpool could do in isolation is if they're able to really break apart this midfield double pivot is you really start to have 1v1 duels between the wingers and the two fullbacks. It, or I suppose two of the back three in this particular case for Man City. Man City do not want to run towards their own box. Kevin De Bruyne does not want to come back. Neither does Bernardo Silva. We could go on with the rest of the side, but they don't want to do it. So if you're able to isolate 1v1 scenarios, this is key, 1v1 scenarios between Liverpool's attackers and Man City's defenders, Liverpool will have the greater advantage. Mo Salah up against Nathan Ake is a nightmare, which is why they're going to need to flood the area. And this is why Ruben Diaz and the likes of Rodri are so crucial in trying to cover. They defend with numbers. They defend with intensity and that's because they are terrified of the 1v1 duels. If Mo Salah is able to line up Nathan Ake on a break or being able to utilize his pace to be able to occupy the space in and around this area, I believe that is just going to make it that little bit easier. If I highlight these areas for you, the duels that could take place in these areas and these slots played over from the likes of a Sobberslai, played over from the likes of a McAllister, Trent would previously play these passes as well, but obviously he's not available. You know the scenarios that I'm talking about, and then it's about whether Darwin Nunes can get the better of Ruben Diaz. The 1v1 duels are essential, but in isolating these duels between the Liverpool front three and the Manchester City back three, you all, all of a sudden have an imbalance. And it's this imbalance that Liverpool could utilise at Anfield to really exploit the Premier League champions. Is it easy? No, not at all. But Man City are definitely conceding chances this season. And that means hope. And sometimes at Anfield, that's all that Liverpool need. But my question to you guys is, what do you think is going to happen during the game? And how do you see it playing out? Let me know your thoughts and your score predictions in the comment section below. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.